Okay, so first of all, um, thank you, Yolanda, um, for inviting me, for giving me this opportunity to um, talk about uh, my research today. And um, also thanks to the organizers of this conference. So I think they um, did an amazing job putting this um, agenda, um, this program um, together. And I guess um, Anne, who is sitting outside, deserves uh, lots of credit. Okay, at least she, she had to deal with my um, habit not to use Microsoft Office products. Um, to create my slides and to write my papers. So um, that was certainly a challenge um, on her side. Yeah, so as you learned said, so my name is Paiko Thiele. Um, I'm one of the economists uh, I went, uh, even, um, you know, was complaining about. I'm at the um, School of Business here at Queen's University, and my research focus is on venture capital um, and entrepreneurship in general. So, so this research um, project, um, yeah, so the title, um, the tentative title is Competition Among Venture Capitalists um, for Creative Entrepreneurial Ideas. So that's a joint project with my co-authors, Jose Plendujevic from Temple University and Costa Servis from um, Drexel University. So we do have a couple of papers on um, VC market. So that was actually our first project, and we are now building on um, this paper. Now, when I go to um, econ conferences and present my um, entrepreneurship research, so I usually spend quite a bit of time motivating or making the case for entrepreneurship. So I don't think I need to do it um, today on this conference. Um, so we all um, agree that entrepreneurship is utterly important for job creation, um, for you know, the long run economic growth of the Canadian economy. Um, but I want to emphasize one key contribution of entrepreneurship, and this is you know, coming up or creating innovative products which helps us here in Canada to remain competitive um, on an international level. Okay, so Canada is a high wage um, country, so we rely on those innovative products to remain um, competitive. Now, so the key question is, um, well, so how can we um, foster entrepreneurship, right? So there are many um, you know, people out there here in Canada having some smart, innovative ideas, and um, so we just need to um, encourage them somehow to take risk and to pursue um, these ideas, right? To pursue these innovations. Now, unfortunately, I don't really have a perfect answer to this question, but I can give you some ideas what um, our research study, uh, study suggests. Now, but I also want to stress that I mean, for, um, we can make solid policy implications, so we have, to have, we, we, we have to have a better understanding of markets, of the market for business ideas, for innovative business ideas, um, before we actually can make these recommendations. Okay? So we need to have a better understanding of the VC market in particular. I mean, there's lots of research done in the last two decades, so we do have a better understanding of the VC market, which is very unique in several um, respects, but we don't have a complete understanding what's going on in the VC market. And this is where um, we actually got in and started uh, working on our research project. So what are the key factors for entrepreneurs here, especially in Canada? Well, um, financing is certainly one very important um, key factor, right? So we had several presentations today where um, you know, um, the presenters pointed out that financing or capital is limited. Right? So we need uh, more financing for entrepreneurs, but at the same time, and this is something which is um, usually underestimated, so this is what, um, what we need as well, management expertise. Right? So when you think about the typical on, um, engineer who comes up with a very innovative product, with an innovative idea, well, it's very hard for an engineer simply to um, start his own venture and to pursue these ideas. So you need some management expertise. Okay? Now, one way to get access to this management expertise is well, simply to go to a venture capitalist or to an angel investor and ask for some financing. Right? So venture capital firms and angel investors so they put in some um, capital, they inject some capital in new ventures, but at the same time, they bring something else to the table. So they provide management ex expertise, and they provide um, access to critical resources, networks, distribution channels, and so on. Okay, so I just want to give you a number, uh, which I find um, very remarkable. Um, so the total, um, the total fund in 2009 in the US um, was about $246 billion. So the private equity market is quite substantial in the US. When you take a look at the next number, and when you think, well, this number was impressive, well, it actually declined quite a bit from the, three previous, um, from the fund size 
um, in the previous year, 2008, actually by 61%. So what this number actually suggests is that the VC market is highly volatile, it's highly sensitive um, to economic um, cycles. Right? So in economic booms, um, well, VCs do have huge funds available, right? so they have very deep pockets, and um, they really compete fiercely for entrepreneurial ideas. Right? So they go on the market, they have very deep pockets, and they compete for the top ideas in the market. Right? So when you think about, when you remember uh, the dot-com bubble, uh, 1995 to 2000, so lots of these VCs, they competed, and eventually, as soon as they've seen the word internet and these business proposal, business plans, so eventually financed these ventures. I mean, it's an exaggeration, but this is essentially what um, happened uh, until 2000 uh, when the bubble burst. Now, in economic uh, busts, well, Canadian economy is recovering right now. Um, the US economy is still in a deep recession. Um, well, there are still many business ideas out there, but because VCs don't have enough funds, well, we forego many business opportunities. Okay? So and some of these ideas are lost, right? So these entrepreneurs, choose, um, yeah, do something else instead of um, trying to get um, funding for their ideas. So what is the key challenge for investors? And that is essentially, um, you know, the topic I'm going to talk about in the, um, in the next 15 minutes. Well, first of all, we do have, um, you know, very different um, business ideas in the market, right? So for VCs, for managers of venture capital, um, firms, it's very hard to predict how successful these ideas will be, right? So it's extremely hard to pick the most promising business ideas, right? But at the same time, um, well, it is partially because we have uh, lots of heterogeneity um, on the entrepreneurial side, right? So we do have entrepreneurs with totally different skill sets, right? So some have a very good business background, management background, some other entrepreneurs have an engineering background. So there's lots of, um, there's lots of variety on the entrepreneurial side, as well as on the quality of ideas. Right? And just to give you um, some examples for different idea qualities, um, so th those are what I would call the star ventures. Right? So those ventures at some point received VC financing. Right? So Google, the most prominent example, well, initial VC investment, about $25 million. So now the market value is more than $150 billion. Okay? Now, of course, there were multiple VC investments, and VCs only um, hold a fraction of the total equity. Okay? But nonetheless, I mean, those are the investments which really um, turn out to be um, profitable. Right? So VCs, they make multiple investments, and we know many of those investments will not um, work out at all. They're just searching for this one-star idea, and then they make um, you know, their money. But at the same time, just to illustrate that we do have lots of heterogeneity on the um, entrepreneurial side, well, there are quite a few ideas out there which I would claim, well, have no, have no prospect whatsoever, okay? So one idea which I found online is, yeah, so the hair guard for noodle eating and um, the cleaning slippers, okay? And um, I don't know, I mean, in my own personal opinion, if I was an angel investor, I wouldn't put my own money in these ideas. So there's lots of heterogeneity on the entrepreneurial side, but we do have some empirical evidence that the same applies to the VC side. Right? So VCs are not identical. VCs are quite different. Right? So VCs have different expertise, different management expertise. They have different industry expertise. They have different access to networks, distribution channels, and so on and so forth. Right? So what do we have in the VC market now is that we do have uh, different entrepreneurs with different skills, different ideas, and we do have um, heterogeneous VCs on the other side of the market, and they somehow match. Okay? And we do find um, evidence for what we call in economics um, positive assortative matching. So the high quality VC um, matches with a high quality entrepreneur, medium quality VC matches with a medium quality entrepreneur, and low quality VC matches with low quality entrepreneur. Right? So we do have empirical um, evidence for that. Now, the reason for um, positive assortative matching is first, we have a selection effect and we have a treatment effect. So a, se a selection effect pretty much means while well, VCs with more experience, where well, they are really better at picking the top ideas. Okay? So this is the um, selection effect. And a treatment effect, well, VCs with more experience 
where they provide more value added to these firms, right? So their ventures are more successful because they get more out of EVCs, okay? Now, there was a little debate in the finance literature where, you know, which effect um, you know, is more important, a selection effect or treatment effect, and uh, this puzzle was resolved by Sorensen in 2000, uh, published 2007 in the Journal of Finance, um, and he showed that selection effect is much more important than the treatment effect. So both effects are important, but the selection effect is um, almost as twice as important as the treatment effect. 